Hello, everybody. Um, I'm very pleased to welcome you to the MIP Lab, the startup contest of MIP TV. Uh, this year, we are honored to have um, a great sponsor, uh, which is Canal Plus, Canal Start, uh, which is an evidence of how important uh, digital innovation is with, uh, for the global TV industry. Um, I am Raphael Toledano. I'm the lead project manager at Faber Novel, which is an innovation company that um, help large organizations act and think like startups. And uh, we've been the selection partner for this uh, startup contest. We have received over 60 uh, applications, great applications from all around the world that dramatically change uh, the way TV industry work, uh, the way you collaborate, the way you monetize your content. And uh, we have selected five finalists uh, that are gonna pitch uh, today. Before starting the pitching session, um, I'd like to introduce our amazing jury this year. So we have uh, Mornia Lafan from RTE Digital, uh, Caroline Cassi from um, uh, Yahoo 7, uh, Jacques-Edouard Sabatier, uh, from, uh, who is the head of digital content at Canal+, uh, Farid Mokart from uh, Fred and Farid Group, and Oscar Hoglund, who is the CEO of uh, Epidemic Sound. Uh, so each startup will have five minutes to pitch their project and then three minutes of Q&A uh, from the jury. If you have any question, uh, we will have a couple of minutes at the end of the session uh, for the audience to interact with the startup. So feel free to keep your question in mind and you will be able to, uh, uh, to ask them and interact with the different pitcher at the end of the session. Uh, we're going to start with Dramatify. So, you can come. Do I have a clicker somewhere? Clicker? Clicker? Here, is this clicker? Yes. Hello, we are here today because our industry is in heavy disruption. We are ask, asking ever more from our production teams. In other industries, the adoption of mobile, modern collaboration tools is a no-brainer and a game-changer. Ordinary team members says it improves team communication, efficiency, creativity and innovation, and it makes access to files and information much easier. And in the project, that boils down to increased productivity, better resource management, and decreased risk. But of course, most of all, it means that more projects can be delivered on time and on budget. In our industry, though, paper is still the norm, along with endless emails, group SMS, single-use software, and vanishing Dropbox files. I think we can do better. Dramatify is specifically developed for our industry and to answer the need of a mobile production tool with our special formats and needs for scripted, non-scripted, unscripted commercials and online video. And it's not just for the producers, the production managers, and the coordinators. Dramatify is for all of the team, from executives to cast and crew and drivers and caterers. With everything in one place during shooting, with production information that can be updated in a snap, and with an interface that makes work fun. Let's have a look.
We at Dramatify are a small, dedicated team based in Stockholm with a broad experience in TV, film, advertising, internet development and online business. We are furiously working to develop all the features our 800 users in more than 25 countries of the world are asking of us. They know where the future lies. And they know that with Dramatify, they can work whenever and whenever. And if you, like them, want to produce smarter and greener, you have a great opportunity right now. Dramatify is free until the fall when we launch our monthly subscription service. So right now, and that, that's because we want to offer as many people as possible the opportunity to take the step into the future of production. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing. We are actively looking for investors and corporate collaborators. So if that's your thing, come talk to me afterwards or tweet me at Annika. Thank you. Thank you, Annika. Um, now we have three minutes from, uh, for the jury questions. If you have any, you have the mic. Hello. Hello. Um, can, can you tell us more about the, the profile of your, your company? Uh, is it, uh, an, uh, the, the, what, what is your stage of development? Are you still in an early stage? How many people are uh, in the companies and in the company, and is there uh, an, an in-house development team for the application? Yes, it's an uh, sorry. Oh, uh, yes, it's an in-house. Uh, we do everything ourselves, uh, apart from secure hosting. Uh, we are right now in a beta stage. Uh, we launch uh, specifically uh, or, or sharply in the fall, and that's not because the service is unstable or anything like that. It's just that the large production companies, especially when it comes to heavy drama development, are asking for three more features. So that's what we're doing right now. Thanks, Annika. Um, I was just wondering about the revenue model. So you mm -hmm. mentioned that it's currently free, but you'll be charging subscription oh, yes. after that. Uh, Do so you have any details? Yeah, so, so the, it, uh, charging will be in group increments, you know, up to three, up to 10, 25, 50, 100, 150, and so on. So we will start around 45 euros a month. And uh, say an ordinary European uh, feature film production or, or um, series will be around 600 euros a month. And that's the basic model because we're going to add a lot of sort of broadcasting uh, blockbuster features on top of that. So that's the basic service. Can you tell me something about if you can develop this asset over time? Because you're collecting a lot of data, and I'm assuming that if you have the right kind of data over time, your asset gets more and more valuable, and getting new customers should be even easier. Do you have any thoughts about how you would structure something like that? Yes. about uh, As you know, about 95% of team members in this industry are freelancers. So they work for you here, and then they go to the next project. So they spread the word of that. At the same time, these freelancers are, uh, want more w jobs. They want to keep on in touch with their uh, colleagues and so on. So we see huge opportunity to develop outside of pure production and into more kind of, um, say, LinkedIn or something like that, but still tied very t tightly to production. You have 800 customers now, mm. and users, mm. users mm. Um, and you're going to go and start charging. What, how many do you need to make this viable? We look at productions, so um, we're looking at uh, about, at currently about um, 100 hour productions a month, Ro rolling. So that's not 100 new productions per month, but 100 productions rolling at to, the same to time. To make the company viable. Yeah. Thank you. So it was Annika from Dramatify. Um, <laughs> relevancy data now. Our mission is to organize the world of video content by indexing every element of the video content and create endless engagement. 
Do you recognize this feeling when you're watching your favorite TV show and suddenly a annoying commercial appear? Imagine a match made in skin heaven with Venus and Olay. Olay moisture bars help. So what did we see here? We saw commercial of Venus shaving blade before a content of football Messi. These ads are not relevant. And why this is happening? Because today, all the market leaders like Google, Yahoo, the TV companies, they all focus on the data of the users and reach in order to target advertising. This user data is sold in the online trending desk every millisecond. This is a billion euro sector while at the same time, the online video advertising is the fastest growing category in the online market, and there is no one company that sells this data. In, in case, 85% of the people click skip this ad today, and because of that, everyone is losing money. The content provider, because every click skip this ad, they don't earn for this click. The, the brands, they are losing engagement with their user. They get less return on investment. And ask the users, bad user experience, irritation. Relevancy data developed a powerful commercial engine that go beyond face recognition. Our engine able to recognize logos, objects, music, faces, and even emotion to better target advertising. After 15 months of research and development, we launched our first paying customer, BMW. We ran two campaigns in YouTube for a duration of one month. The first campaign was based on the data of the user, the way targeting works today. For the second campaign, we added to the data of the user the data of the content that was provided by our recognition technology. I'm happy to share with you today that we proved our assumption because 42% more people viewed the ad that was based on our recognition technology. Today, just a few hours ago, Google published problematic buying comes to television. Media agency and TV networks search for the best fit model that will happen. Now I would like to share with you how our engine works. Our engine able today to detect millions of faces and logo at the same time. This is scalable. We add this metadata into each individual ID file. We know exactly in which second it appears. Then this data we sell to the advertisers that able today to enrich their targeting. So in addition to which they will know where the ad will end. This works on pre-roll, this works on overlay, this works also in the second screen for the TV industry. Because this is so unique, we patented this solution. Our companies, which is our partner, are the digital TVs, like SBS that we're starting a campaign with them next month, the online platform like YouTube, Daily Motion and the media brands. Media brands work on a CPA model and the TV works on a license model plus a rev share. The team, myself, Michal, for me, this is my second company. My first company called easytobook.com, which I sold three years ago to one of the largest travel company in the Netherlands, BCD Travel. And my partner, Aviram, which has many years experience in the technology. We selected the market leaders to be in an advisory board. One of them, she's Marsha Dushan, which was the one that built the YouTube in the UK. And she's the head of director of advertising at Microsoft. Together with all this knowledge, we will bring this company to the next level. Our ambition is to be the market leader in video advertising. Everything in life start with engagement. In order to engage, you need this relevant data. Thank you. Any, any question from the jury? Um, apart from 
from the senior management team, what size team do you have and what kind of resources do you have? We have already for yeah. we have already for almost two years uh, six developers and we have uh, one marketeer and myself and we have this advisory board that we meet on a monthly basis in order to understand how the market works and how we can implement this solution into also the programmatic uh, uh, sector and also to the, v to the TV and the internet. What's in trance to profile uh, correctly the audience is the affinity. Can you repeat your question? How you select your audience, which criteria? The audience, which is the users, yeah. you mean? The advertisers, they gave us the access to the users. So they know exactly who, what's the profile to the user. So then we add the algorithm of the content to the user profile. That makes the strong match between the user and the content. I hope I answered your question. Can you tell me something about your vision when it comes to content creators? Because I think this is super interesting, and the way I see it, it accentuates the value of great and relevant content. And your product would undoubtedly help advertisers to be more relevant. It would definitely help platforms to generate 42% more views and more revenue. But do you have a vision for how this is going to be of benefit to the content creators of the super relevant content also? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I see our customers are the content providers and the advertisers. For the content provider, we enrich your content because we know now exactly what is in the video file. We know if now you have just few metadata that not all of them authorize because some of them user generate, we can create a authorized metadata that can be lifted into a higher price for the future to sell advertiser. But not only that, we enrich also the profile of the user because once we know every day what you are watching, we know more about what is in the video and we can learn about your behavior. So this is also increase and enrich the user profile. Uh, I'm wondering, but what is the, the, the accuracy, the relevancy of your algorithm? I mean, do you always find the right person in the right video? Or? Okay, a little bit about the technology. The technology, um, actually, uh, we wrote it via a, a the team of uh, intelligence service that did it in the security. So this is already proven technology, but on the security. And then we bring it now to the e-commerce. We train our engine every day for more faces, more logo. And our vision is to become the market leader in everything related to metadata, to add video, uh, so that images and also audio, which is keyword spotting, speak to text. And then our strengths is all the technologies under one roof. Thank you. Thank you, Michal. So now, Stephen from Right Trade. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised when uh, Right Trade was selected by MIP TV for this competition because uh, the industry that we're disrupting is um, MIP TV, in a sense. Uh, <laughs> but. Um, not really. I've been attending these markets for many years. Uh, I worked at Miramax, Technicolor, Paramount. There's no substitute for the personal relationships that you develop by attending a market, uh, and that drives uh, a lot of the business, obviously. But there is a huge need to streamline all of and speed up all of the painful steps that are involved in the complex licensing process, whether you're at a market or back at the home office. So. While it's true that buyers and sellers can rack up about 60,000 miles traveling from market to market over the course of a year at a pretty high expense, they spend most of their time and resource dealing with pretty painful administrative activities, from sharing their availabilities of their rights, to screening content, uh, to negotiating and signing deals and processing that around internally and with external third parties, payments and deliveries, et cetera, and then updating their rights management software or other systems internally. Uh, because of this long process, uh, it, it ends up taking six or even nine months to close most deals. And when it takes that long to close a lot of deals, you end up only closing the high value deals. The result of this is a classic case of excess inventory. 
There's a huge amount of unexploited rights for content owners that they should be exploiting. And on the other side of the market, buyers also have a very difficult time finding out what rights are available to license. And even though there are thousands of new VOD platforms and emerging markets buyers out there, there's been no rights availability search engine for them to, to find this more quickly and easily. So a solution to save time and increase sales is obviously needed. Now many have recognized the huge value that an online marketplace solution would bring to this $60 billion content licensing industry. But until recently, the technology simply wasn't there to support a scalable option. The only way to really build a viable marketplace for this is to tap into the rights management data. And that's the strategy that, that rights trade have taken. What we've done is we've partnered with the industry's biggest rights management platform called FilmTrack. Uh, and with that integration, we're able to onboard any of their 200 clients, which includes over 4 million uh, title assets and metadata. And with the API that we've developed, we can also onboard pretty much any other client that's using another rights management platform, or even if they don't have one. So this approach has already led us to huge initial success. A year ago, we released our screening services, and we've already delivered over 40,000 secure screenings between buyers and sellers. And our market on demand has grown to host as many registered buyers as attend MIP TV. But we're not only the world's biggest online marketplace. By streamlining every step of the process, from search to screen to signing and syncing to the rights management in the back office, we're actually created the next generation licensing platform. Here's a look at how we're transforming the process for buyers with our rights availability search engine called RightSearch. Rights trade market on demand. It's about time. When you need content for your TV, VOD, or other platform, you need it fast. However, it's not always easy to know who has the rights you need, and even when you know, it can take some time to get an answer. There must be a better way. Introducing RightSearch, the world's most comprehensive search engine for film and TV avails, with over 500,000 rights from leading content owners and sales agents of new release titles and classic library titles. With Right Search, you can now discover available feature film and television rights for your territory and platform by genre, release year, language, and many more. Once you find the rights you need, just add them to your shopping list and make free inquiries to the content seller representing each of those rights. Sellers will automatically receive a notification and you will soon be able to close the deal using our offer wizard. Speed up your licensing process with the Rights Trade Market on Demand and find the best content anywhere, anytime. So as that referenced, uh, we've just actually this week launched our Deal Wizard technology, which makes content licensing as easy as booking a room on Airbnb. And in fact, we've kind of borrowed the, the intelligence of the way they've set that up. So once buyers find available rights to license, they send an inquiry to the seller, which can then, with our Deal Wizard, quickly set up all of the key terms and conditions that are involved in a licensing contract. They send that back to the buyer who can counter offer, and when they're ready with the deal, both parties can sign using DocuSign, which is recognized in 188 territories as legally binding, and when the deal is done, it updates the rights management software in the back office, saving three hours worth of administrative time. The um, partners are on board from FilmTrack. Are they actually all, if I'm in Australia and I want to go into a search for Sony, a &E, Turner's content, can I do that now and actually actively buy it? Or is that sort of the pipeline opportunity? You, you actually can. Now, not for every, I mean, Sony in particular, they're not on the platform right now. But yes, uh, as of... Friday, uh, we've now launched this whole platform where you can, if you find the rights available, then you can go through the whole deal process and license them. Okay, sorry, I've just got another quick question. So are people actually actively doing that already? Well, we've just launched it. So, um, and given that licensing deals do take six to nine months to complete, uh, I'd be surprised if a deal has actually been done in the last sort of 24 hours. But, um, you know, we'll see. Uh, the, the whole idea is trying to speed up that sales cycle, if we take it down from six months to three months or six weeks or six days, let alone six hours, I mean, every, all of this is possible, but it, it's a question of how, how much we can bring that up. Um, I'm 
I'm wondering what is the maturity uh, of the CMS part of the industry? I mean, I think that not all the company have an IP management system uh, in-house. And uh, what, what is your value proposition when you are uh, dealing with a company that haven't digitalized all his, uh, its IP? And do you, the other question is, do you want to focus your business on being a marketplace? Or do you also want to offer a solution to kind of externalize the IP, the IP management for the companies that are not digitalized yet? Um, we, are, we are focused on streamlining that whole licensing process. So there's a series of software as a service, uh, services that we offer from the screening room service to updating the rights management on the back end. But primarily, it ends up resulting in a marketplace. Um, so for companies that do not have a rights management platform, we can integrate them with our API. It's more of a manual process, but it can be done. But we're really trying to hit most of the market. One of the big changes that's happened is that so many companies have adopted rights management platforms at this point. It wasn't possible to do this five years ago because it hadn't proliferated to that point. But now companies of a certain level, they all do have systems. And FilmTrack, their own growth has kind of proven that out, going from about 50 clients maybe three years ago to over 200 now. And they're not alone. So, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on classical barriers to entry. So what's um, hindering other companies from you creating this space and then some of the big giants coming in who are big data companies? <laughs> uh, rights management is incredibly complicated. Uh, a lot of the big companies have tried, spent tens of millions of dollars setting up rights management platforms for big studios and medium size, and not achieved even what FilmTrack, which was a scrappy uh, startup company themselves 13 years ago. Uh, they set them up, they fall down, they don't work well. Anyone trying to come into this space, I welcome them. Uh, they'll take a while to get up and running and be able to manage the complexity of the rights. And what we're doing, it's very hard to explain, I probably don't even have time, but Taking that complexity, simplifying it in the marketplace, and then bringing it back out into the actual contract that gets signed is what we do. And that is not an easy task. Thank you, Stephen. So now please welcome Thomas for Wide Mocha. <laughs> So, um, hello, thank you for being here. I'm Thomas Mangi, co-founder of Wellmoca with uh, Christian Livagiotti. And at Wellmoca, uh, we know you have amazing content and we do amazing stuff with it. So, this is us, um, a French-based startup. For many of us, we know each other for more than 10 years, working in industries like mobile phones, uh, back-end system for operators and so on, a lot of techy stuff. One year ago, we decided to go our own path, and we've created Walmoka. We kept a foot in this world um, because we are still working for AT&T today, helping them doing their backend system to allow uh, to offer SMS, location payment, and so on to their customer. Uh, this is helping us a lot, obviously, technically, but financially also. Uh, but doing that, we wanted to do something with more fun in it. Something we can explain to our mom, because it's really hard to explain that. Something we can touch, where we can have creativity and so on. Obviously, the media world was changing a lot, and we wanted to be part of it. We looked around at this time, we had the company, and we've seen that short video, animated GIFs, uh, Vine and so on were a big thing. How to mix this new way of communication with high quality content from uh, from the media world, broadcasting, and so on. We come up um, with a new concept. We call it video cut and paste. The main idea is that you are looking at a show you like on TV. You grab a piece of it, and you put it on uh, Twitter, Facebook, emails. You send it to your friends, and so on. So we built a demonstration, um, an application, iPhone application, and we went to uh, see all the medias to see what was the answer. And pretty early, we have been in production with Canal+. Plus. Thank you, guys. Um, after, we went to other um, French TV channels, like D8, and now NRG12. So a quick glance on how it is working. So imagine you are watching Canal+, Plus on your PC, and uh, you want to grab a piece of what you are looking for. Uh, 
you miss the video. So you watch it, you, can, you have a, an editor, you can select the piece you like, you play it, you can make it an anima in animation, you send it to Twitter, and in no time, this is in your timeline to be seen by your friends, but also controlled by Canal Plus, which is owning the right and so on of this content. This is working on second screen. This, this is also working on box, but not in production for the box. One interesting fact on this, uh, on this pro product, for example, is that a well-known metrics of Twitter today is that for one tweet, you have 50 views. With an unseen content, uh, like we've seen, you get 400. Because when you are sharing this quality content, a lot more people will want to see it. We didn't stop here. Uh, at this point, um, Canal Plus understood very well what we've done, and they wanted to do something very unique for the, their 30 years, to celebrate their 30 years. So they presented us with Vibox Production, um, a famous outlet doing a, a great comedy show in France, and they had this crazy idea. They wanted to do something unique, uh, an episode that would be completely unique and different for each one, everyone looking at it. So we were talking about millions of different versions of the same videos. So we've built this with them. So thanks to our platform, we've been able to put this in place. So the idea that you select your name, you select from 30 years of archives from Canal+, Plus. so the great one we all know in France, at least. Uh, and then, just for you, we craft a video. You can look at it, you can share it with your name inside, a personal, completely personal one. Uh, which is unique to you, depending on the archives you have chosen, but also the narration, which will be different, and the, the variation in the storytelling. So, at the end, our platform is really to show that first broadcast and uh, digital world can mix together very well, because one key fact of this, uh, this production is that at the second it has been aired in, uh, in, a bro in, broadcast, in broadcasting, broadca broadcasting show, sorry, We've seen thousands of uh, views in just a few seconds. One million generated episodes in just two days. It has been completely bootstrapped by the broadcasting. So at the end, what we do is allowing you to build your own content. Sorry. 10 seconds. No. <laughs> the same for all the startups. OK, so, so just. Maybe for the questions. For the question. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I thought that was really interesting, and it seems like the video space is really busy at the moment, and I wondered how you differentiate yourselves, especially from something like Snappy TV, which seems to have a lot of the similar features and functionality. Yes, yes so Snap Snappy TV, which has been bought by Twitter at this time, was really about uh, content management. So it, it was really for the, um, the people doing the branding around Twitter and so on. So it was a tool. What we are doing is a tool. It is used also by the... Uh, the, the brand manager from the medias, but also directly by the end user. What we think is that it's time to see the video completely differently from what it is today. You want to have it personalized for you, not only for the ads, but also for the content. What is your commercial model? So, um, so we are a kind of mixed platform. We are a tool for production, but we are, we are also a diffusion platform. So we have a model for ingestion of the content. You pay for it as a media. And you pay for the usage of it. So depending on the media, some can uh, monetize it with advertisements. So we have a revenue share. Or it's more on the usage, if, of only for usage. Can you quantify uh, the volume of free media money-wise you create with the audience spreading uh, content? So, so it, de it depends on the channel on many things because it's really linked to the brand that is doing it. For example, for Canal Plus with Breath, it's a, it has been millions. Uh, for a show like on Energy 12, it's been a hundred of thousands so of views. So it really depends on, uh, on the branding. So this is just for the sharing part. Say something about the different rights situations that must have popped up during oh, the yes. last couple of weeks, <laughs> months, years. Yeah, so, so um, honestly, at the beginning, we were seeking that we could provide an end-to-end -end consumer 
stuff with all the channel. Okay, <laughs> just not possible. So at the end, we've seen that um, there's an opportunity with the rights management because at the end, um, people have rights and many times they can't use it. For example, we are working with sports guys. They have a huge amount of archives in the sport. They can't use. They, they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to put those rights in front of people because nobody wants to see old match. So how to do that? We cut in piece, we, we do automatic resume and so on. We have also people that want to control very, very precisely what is shared, for example. I don't want to share this kind of program. I don't want to share this program if it's a replay. I don't so we had to add this kind of control in our platform every, everywhere up to a complete control of what is can be shared or not, individually by people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now the last startup, uh, Miles. Thank you. Uh, no. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Miles Bullough. I'm Managing Director and Co-Founder of Wild Seed Studios. Um, we believe that the new wave of talent which is currently working on YouTube and other digital platforms are going to invent the next wave of uh, entertainment hits in the mainstream media. And we've set up Wild Seed Studios to enable that new generation of talent to take what they do to the next level. And we do that by providing them with three things, with mentorship, creative and strategic mentorship, with investment, and uh, with distribution. Um, so to talk a little bit about the next wave of talent, um, we, we saw a dilemma for this, for this new talent. And on the one hand, they've never had it so easy. These kids uh, working now, they can buy a, a prosumer camera, they can buy a laptop, they can plug themselves into YouTube. They're a production company and a broadcaster just uh, straight away like that. But there's also a dilemma for them in that um, how do they get good? How do they learn how to tell stories? How do they learn how to shoot professionally? How do they learn about some of the more complicated uh, legal and rights issues? Um, and uh, because the opportunities for them to work with big media companies, especially in somewhere like the UK, which where big media companies is a, is a contracting market, um, those opportunities have gone. So we set up Wild Seed Studios as a kind of intermediary between the, the new talent and the big media organizations to help develop exciting, fresh, new, new content, what we believe will be the next wave of entertainment hits and to interface with big media companies and help take those hits to, to other platforms. So this new generation of talent, they're incredibly technically adept. Uh, they're very versatile, they're fearless, they'll try anything. They'll teach themselves anything that they don't know. They're very, they're very inventive. They embrace low cost production, so they really aren't interested in big budgets, uh, certainly when they start. Um, and they're really interested in velocity. They're really interested in moving forward at pace. And these are all things that are very disruptive to, um, to companies, uh, to big media companies, which take months, sometimes years, to, um, to develop and finance uh, their shows. And, key, and crucially, these new producers um, have social influence, and they are all, the successful ones are all marketeers as well as, as, well as producers. Um, so yes, we offer, these, we offer these four things, creative mentorship, so my business partner, uh, is, was at the BBC for 10 years and was a script editor in BBC Films and BBC Digital Lab. Uh, strategic advice, so I've been an executive producer for 25, 30 years. Um, we offer finance uh, to help uh, these new creators take their work to the next level. And then we have distribution as well. We've set up our own um, digital channels, which I'll talk about in a second, um, to make sure that this work can get exposed to an audience and we can find out whether it's going to get traction or not, and we can also demonstrate with our metrics to, um, to buyers whether, whether our products are working or not. Um, our investment funnel, very briefly, we've taken a sort of VC approach to investing in creative products, uh, whereby we make these uh, micro-investments of £10,000, um, and we, in any three-year period, we're going to make 50 of them. Um, we follow up the, the, um, the 25 most successful investments with a further investment of £25,000. So the first decision we make is utterly fearless. We, we back our hunches, we, do, we back crazy ideas. Uh, we don't mind if they work or not. Um, we, we try not to second guess the market. We just go with things that we think will be interesting. 
In the second round, we try to be a bit more strategic. We try and think, is there a potential business model here? Are we going to be able to sell this uh, onto a third-party platform? Or is there going to be a, an audience for it on our own platforms? And then we, we also uh, have raised enough money to make five £100,000 investments in, in the five most successful properties. And we need one hit, one giant good big hit, admittedly, but one hit for our numbers to work, for our company to be, to be successful and profitable. Um, these are our channels, so we have set up so far three channels, a Wild Seed Comedy channel, we launched that in November of last year uh, on YouTube and on Facebook and uh, we also uh, embed all our videos on our own website and in uh, the next quarter we're launching our own app, so all these channels will appear on our app. We have a Wild Seed Sci-Fi channel, again uh, the first iteration of it is on YouTube which we see as a fantastic marketing platform. And we also have a creator sort of driven uh, channel called Wild Seed Studios. Um, we are, uh, the, the two of us are co-founders. So Jesse, as I said, was at the BBC for uh, a number of years. And I was at Ardman for 10 years where I did uh, Shaun the Sheep and Wallace and Gromit. And our vision is to grow Wild Seed into a leading destination for 16 to 34 year old talent and audiences looking to create and consume cutting edge scripted entertainment and in so doing, build a valuable you, media brand and a Sorry. library of IP. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. In, you. in terms of you, you have a lot of channels currently. Can yes. you tell us how they're doing and yes. how the talent that you have are working with, you know, how they're progressing towards this? Sure. So um, the Wild Seed Comedy Channel has been our main focus, uh, which has now sort of been up there five months. Um, we've, just, we've just shot through a million uh, views on the channel, which we're really, really pleased with. It's, um, so, uh, and we are now heading towards 4,000 subscribers on that channel. So again, um, we've taken a steady approach. It's growing, it's growing exactly the way we want it to. Um, our first project that we put up on there was called Staff Room. And uh, that was a sitcom. We made it for 10,000 pounds. We made a five, five times 10 minute sitcom. That's just been, uh, we're in negotiation now, I'm allowed to say we're in negotiation with Comedy Central to pick up that, and also working with a beer brand, which I can't name, um, uh, to sponsor a second season of, of that show. So, um, so the creators are very, very happy because they can see that, that was a, that's an example of a show which was, had, been, had been taken around all the broadcasters in the UK, had got no traction whatsoever because it didn't have a star in it, uh, or what the television stations perceived to be a star. And uh, we were able to make it um, with our £10,000, put it on our channel, and prove to, uh, to Comedy Central that it was a viable project with, uh, with an audience that was going to come to it. I'm not sure if I missed it, but um, can you explain how the revenue comes back from the creators? Like, how do, Is that a revenue share with them? Is so so we, we, we're looking at multiple different revenue streams. And uh, like all good disruptive startups, we're not quite sure which one yet is going to win. And, and, uh, and, uh, but I don't think anyone really knows in the media yet which revenue model is going to win. But we're, t we're, we're taking advertising revenue from YouTube, obviously, in small, in small numbers at the moment. Sponsorship is really, really interesting uh, at the moment. So we're, our shows are being sponsored. That, that, that revenue comes back to Wildsea, which we split with the, uh, with the creators. We are, um, we're just about to launch a crowdfunding campaign for our second season of the show that's just finished on... Um, just finished airing on, uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, we're, we're probably not going to do subscription. We think that's too, that's too much, too early uh, for the moment. Um, but we will probably do microtransactions within our app. So we will make five episodes of something which will be available for free, and then we'll make a premium episode, which you'll be able to buy uh, through microtransactions. Let's talk about ownership a yes. little bit. Um, who owns what when you do investments, and how so, does that break down? Sure. So um, we license the underlying rights from a property from the creator on an annual rolling basis. If we're good partners, we can roll over our license automatically. We own the content that we fund. So, for example, we own the five episodes of the sitcom that we made, uh, and those are ours to distribute and sell uh, as we see fit. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you to all the speakers of these great startups. Um, we'll have, actually, the jury will have a 10-minute break to um, debrief and choose the winner of uh, this edition of MIP Lab.
Um, so yes, you can go, maybe Sarah is around. Um, during these 10 minutes, uh, as I told you at the beginning, you'll have the opportunity to ask your questions to the startups. So maybe if you want to come on the stage. So if someone in the audience um, has any questions or need further information about uh, the different projects, feel, please feel free to raise your hand and we'll give you a mic. Uh, for uh, Michal, um, what was the investment to create the software? Um, I invested myself in this company, already 1.5 million euro. And uh, we are raising now uh, another round. Uh, this is sustainable uh, development, you can imagine. Yeah, no, I say the, the cost of the software is... Yeah, yeah. Okay. We develop it and we have the own uh, IP, everything is in-house. So all the 1.5 million is for the development yeah, of the yeah, software? Yeah. Okay. So a short reminder, you can see on the screen, you have a link. Uh, actually, this year, uh, you'll have the vote of the jury, but the audience can also vote for the, their favorite. So please go on the following link, and you have the opportunity to vote for the startup you'd prefer. <laughs> so um, we're all startups, so we're, we're all selling ourselves. And um, so this is a great opportunity also to go to Wild Seed Comedy and subscribe to our YouTube channel, or to go to our website and get our newsletter, which will tell you a lot more about what we're doing. Uh, I thank you. <laughs> Another question? Hi there, uh, it's for re re relevancy data. I I'm not sure about uh, what kind of thing you can get from the video. You, it, it seemed that you can get faces, logos, and what else? We can get uh, faces, logos, object, that can be also table or chairs or any kind of object that later you can make a business intelligent, for example, with the advertiser, which is furniture company, so you are able to match with them. Uh, music recognition, and uh, now we are in the middle of the development of keyword spotting and uh, speak to text. So then combine all these metadata together in one company. Okay, thank you. No more questions? For Steven, um, how many programs, how much content you have on your platform, and um, the buyer, how he evaluates the, the product? Uh, we now have over 2,000 titles and TV episodes uh, listed on Right Straight. Um, from, you know, there are over 200 sales companies and content owners that are uh, registered on the site. and. Um, Buyers can evaluate the content by the des there's descriptive metadata, title, synopsis, cast, crew, trailers, etc. Anything that the sellers want to include to, to help make that sales process easier. And buyers uh, can get to that content in a way that they've never been able to do before with that search engine, which is by um, you know, time period that is available, the territory, the rights platform, uh, the genre, year of release, and, and so forth and so on. So getting down into the specifics. And the great thing is that sellers don't have to do any extra work to provide that information if they're already managing it in their rights, their internal rights management. So. Thank you. So if there's no more question, I'll have one. <laughs> because we are in a TV market full of traditional uh, companies. And uh, I was wondering, how is it to work, so for you guys, startups, uh, how is it to work with traditional organizations, companies? Do you find any difficulties working with them? Sure. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's both exciting and challenging. So, uh, you know, linear TV is, is going to be around for a bit longer. I mean, the world is moving to an on-demand uh, business model, uh, but linear TV will be around. It'll probably change what it does. So, uh, so when they look at us, um, they, they, they think um, this isn't relevant to what we're doing. We're about half hour, one hour slots and uh, very, very high budget um, drama with recognizable stars. 
and, uh, and some of them haven't heard of the stars that we work for. But I mean, I had a presentation from a digital startup um, a few weeks ago, and they showed me their metrics, and, their, and their, their audience is actually bigger than the biggest channel in the UK. Um, they're, obviously, they're not as valuable as that, uh, as the biggest channel in the UK at the moment, but, but, their, but their audience is, is bigger, and, that's, uh, and therein lies future value, which is, um, which is really quite exciting. Well, we serve a very definable and tangible need to the people I meet, and they are like, thank you for doing this. So I would say that people are, are very appreciative of what, we, of what we do. So I think it's great. And I think for our product, I can see that, that we're just at the tipping point. And then some companies are later and some are more ahead. It also has to do with digital adoption uh, in general. Um, Sweden and the Nordics, of course, are one of the uh, hottest uh, mobile markets in the world with very, very forward uh, adoption of mobile technologies. So that, of course, helps. So perhaps we are a bit forward compared to a lot of other markets, but that's where we need to be. So we are ready when everybody else is ready. But even if the companies you, you meet say that your product is very interesting and yeah. the idea is great, oh, yeah. um, is it easy to work with them. Yeah, I would say so. Absolutely. Right. You're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, similar to what you're saying, what we have is meeting uh, the needs and, and solving a lot of pain points. And the way that we've built it, this whole Airbnb style for content licensing, it's just something they've never seen before. And they're falling out of their chairs. So it doesn't matter if they're a producer or a small sales agent or medium or big. <coughs> when they see what we've got, they, they almost can't believe that it's been done. And it's just a great feeling of um, you know, the reinforcement of, of what we're doing. Now, bigger companies move slower. I've worked for a bunch of them, uh, and I know why. Uh, but you know, there are also little pockets that can be very innovative and ready to jump quickly. And um, we see great response. You know, doesn't matter whether they're big or small. Uh, in our case, it's uh, quite easy because, of course, they understand that the power of the content is in, uh, also in the internet, so it's uh, easier to implement. Um, I think that almost every TV company now has a digital and VP innovation, and they understand uh, that they need to move into transaction in the internet, but also on the second screen or TV, IP, etc. So uh, it takes time. Of course, time is always a challenge in startup, um, but we're getting there. Thank you. Um, so, so from our experience, it has been uh, very easy to, to work with them to define new way of using their own content. This part has been uh, great because I think the consciousness of the need for change is already in those big companies. After, those are big companies. So, um, and uh, the media ones are, are not different from the other big company we may have worked for before. Um, so, so this is not linked to the change in the industry. This is more linked to we are small teams, we are small companies, they are big ones. So uh, doing some business with big ones when, when you are little, it, it is taking time. It's really, really, the time is different. After, for uh, the need for innovation and so on, the, the people we've seen in the, in the various media we've, we've met, there's no big barrier about, oh, it's not working, I don't care about you. you do. We never heard this kind of stuff. They know they have something to change, but it's not clear what has to be changed. So we are here to try. And do you see any evolution in the media industry in the past years? Uh, um, I, I'm not in the media industry for long. Um, from, uh, we are coming from the telco world, where everything is very straight, uh, very easy, because the monetization is very clear. Um, they have this uh, money pipe coming from people paying every month the same kind of fee and so on. So uh, uh, this world is not seeing the content as uh, something that has to evolve or move. When, when you switch to the content providing world, yes, yes, really the, the monetization is so at the center of everything on how to be changed for that, that yes, even in one year we've seen some change, even, even on, the, on, the, on the main networks for this. Thank you. Uh, I just have the result for the audience choice. So the winner 
So it's not the official winner, but it, the audience uh, favorite is White Mocha. Ooh, you, you can thank the audience. Forty-two percent. So great results. And then just while we were waiting for the jury to come back, you know, oh, but they come back. So maybe you can go and sit and they will tell you their choice. So Jacques-Edouard Sabatier and uh, Sarah Emar, uh, who is digital executive producer um, at MIP, will come and announce the winner of MIP Lab 2015. Hello, everybody. So on behalf of Read Me Them, I want to thank all the finalists. Thank you very much for your pitch. They were very good. So it's a very good, another very good year for me, Plab. Thank you very much for that. Uh, thank you to Canal Start and Canal Plus for having sponsored this lab. And thank you to Raphael and Faber Novel for having, uh, being selecting partner for, for this competition this year again. And now I'm going to hand the mic to Jacques Edouard and um, to announce the winner. Thank you. So thank you to all the participants to this competition. It was uh, really great. We, uh, we had two potential winners. We actually had to make two runs of uh, voting to, uh, to, uh, to agree uh, about who the winner is. Uh, but among these two potential winners, uh, everybody was OK to say that there is a huge potential. And uh, we were uh, speaking about the previous winner of the competition, and they are all doing very well in the industry. So uh, I hope that uh, this award is the first uh, milestone of a great success story. And so the winner is Right Trade. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry we didn't win the audience award, but uh, <laughs> this is fantastic. Um, do I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I'd like to thank my agent. <laughs> and, and thank you MIP TV and MIP Lab and Digital Fronts and uh, everyone for participating. I was actually blown away by everybody else's presentations, uh, but uh, it's a great honor. So thanks very much. Thank you very much. Um, we need to do some pictures.